It's nice to see young gay couples holding hands, which my generation just would not have dared to do. I think it's difficult for younger people now to realise how difficult it was then. We've gone through a lot of things that's made it easier for people now to be who they are. I never ever saw a time that we would ever not be hated and despised because it was actually overwhelming. I was 16 in 1969 and I, I was told I was a pervert and I didn't know the word lesbian, I didn't know the word gay and I didn't know the word queer. The only words I heard were pervert. As soon as I came out, I was confronted face, face to face with homophobic remarks from my colleagues. Uh, I was told things like, oh, you're disgusting, what you do isn't natural. Sold my house, moved in with a friend, rented with her in London. I met her at a school reunion, a straight woman, when we were great friends. And then in 2012, five years ago, I retired. So I entered the world of the the, the old, you know, my demographic, um, which were old people, British, white, and uh, I know this is a generalisation, but I'm a, unfortunately it's true, they're quite homophobic, so I went back in the closet. I go on YouTube and I was watching an old episode of uh, The L Word and underneath they always put recommendations and it's all young people have put their YouTube, uh, YouTube videos on and they're talking about being positive and being gay and they're so matter of fact about it and I just think why can't I be like that? I thought right I'm coming back out of the closet you know I'm not going to stay I don't want to go into my old age in the closet I spent my youth in the closet and it's horrible and why should I go into my old age back in that awful place? I never came out back home, but my homosexuality was an open secret. If you know what I mean, everybody knew it was gay. But I never actually got on my soapbox and told everybody. Small town officers are terrible for that, you know. People know your business before you do. There's a lot of homophobia. People will tend to stay clear of you to a large extent. You have to watch what you what you do, you can't afford to step out of line. Whereas in London, nobody cares what, how you dress or how you look. So you could be weird, eccentric, whatever. And treat you just more or less as normal. I, I think the difficult part in London being gay is loneliness more than anything else. That can get, get, get to you more than anything, you know. If it wasn't for uh, opening doors, sort of fence and their doors, I would have no social life at all, really, to be honest. It's good that we can all mix together. It's just nice to share time with people who you are, the same as you are, and all the rest. And you're not being judged or anything else. I think it's good to be in an environment when you're with older LGBT people. Um, there's this whole misconception that everybody's young, you know, and it's just nice to just have conversations. We all have different stories. We all come from, uh, you know, same times, but different, different backgrounds. So yeah, coming out, there was no sort of like big reveal. It was a gradually finding the strength to say, this is who I am. And that took a lot of time. It's, you know, probably in my thirties when I started to really show myself. We suffered a lot of homophobia, and along with the homophobia, you get homophobia and if you're black, racism mixed in with it. Um, yeah, and it gives you longevity in the history. You need to be able, you get strength from seeing yourself, not just in something that's young and fresh, but something that sustains itself for years. You know, history is important. That's why we celebrate History Month. Decriminalization is, is uh, is important. It was, a, it was a major thing, but some people still hold on to that. They, even, even though it's, we don't live in that time. You know, I, I talk to older people who are still scared. You know, they still, they still think, you know, what it's going to revert back. The power of silence and ignorance. You know, from a lot of women of my age, we didn't know the word lesbian. They suffered not just from the um, discrimination against lesbians, you know, lots of people lost their jobs and so on. 
but also they had all the other inequalities that were happening, the unequal pay, the unequal jobs, access to jobs and so on. So it's quite, it's a really complex story over the last 50 years. I'd been through that whole late coming out, so I came out to my children, not my parents. Particularly being a mother, the risk of coming out to your children, I mean if my children had not been just wonderful and accepting, but it's the biggest risk I've ever taken in my life. But I was still lacking a gay community, if you like. So, I mean, for me, Opening Doors London was an absolute lifeline. It's fabulous. I think it's fabulous. And I think there's a lot of people in this room who've kind of paved the way so that young people today can just get up in the morning and be themselves. Just be themselves. And I think it's lovely because it's, it's developed beyond the binary, as they say. And there's this excitement about sexual fluidity, about gender fluidity. And, you know, I find myself a bit on trend because, you know, from being bisexual, I think, in my early days, you know, I, I've moved along and, and I wouldn't be happy with that anymore. I am a, a lesbian woman. You still get prejudice and dislike and all that, but I think we're far more open about it now, you know. I mean, I don't get discrimination and insults nowadays because I move in the right circles. I mean, um, all my social life is all with gay people, you see, or theatre life with people who understand it, you know, accept it. I mean, I don't feel at my ease with straight people nowadays, you know, you know. I always think now, if they know, what are they going to think? I had a bad time because I was in the wrong environment. In work circles and in the service, they're all very macho, or say they are, all very anti-gay, and I had a rather bad time. Cruel jokes, threats, insults, and, you know, general uh, look down upon, you know, all that, which was very hurtful. Actually, I'm still scarred by it today. With ordinary straight people, you have to be very careful, you see, not to reveal the fact that you were gay, unless they guessed already. You know. Apart from the fact that it was illegal, people thought you were the dregs of humanity, you see, and, and the, the, you know, the disreputable people with a terrible habit or something like that, you know. People thought it was a horrible habit. And if you met a, the right girl, you would forget about being gay and get married. I, I was, uh, what, about 39, 38 when it was made, um, when it was decriminalised, you see. Yeah, 1967, 39. So quite um, well on, you know. Uh, there was a gay life, but it was all very hidden, you see. Uh, very compartmentalised from ordinary life, you see. It was a separate existence altogether. I thought, this is how I am, so I've just got to accept it, come to terms with it and accept it. There are people who don't or didn't do that, but I did. I was quite, after a few months, I was quite, well, you know, this is how I am, I've got to live my life, so be it. Would I have liked to have grown up now? No. But it, the challenges aren't the same. There is something quite revolutionary about having gone through what we've gone through. Yes. Oh my God, yes. Would I just? That is my one regret. Why wasn't I born three decades later? Um, I'm not saying they've got it easy. I know they haven't got it easy. But it's, it's out there for them. I had no role models when I was a young woman. There was not a single out lesbian or, or gay man. They just didn't exist. I thought I was the only one on the planet.